Welcome to part two of respiration. In part one, we looked at the muscles that control the movement of the rib cage and the diaphragm. Now let's look at how that affects the pressure. Okay, with this video, it will show you the changes in pressure and talk about pressure laws and gas laws. Don't get too wrapped up in the math and physics behind it, but I think it's really important that you realize there are principles behind this. Um, and I'll talk you through them if you get too confusing. And if you get confused about it, just watch how volume and pressure affects the, um, the breathing. The process, process of air flowing, of flowing in, and in and out of the out inspiration, inspiration and expiration. Air movements are governed by the, the principles of gas laws. Principles of basically, gas from, basically higher pressure, from higher to lower pressure. Pressure within a cavity pressure. increases when its volume pressure decreases and vice versa. Volume, volume of a given amount of gas increases with increased temperature. At rest in between breaths or inside the lungs or intrapulmonary pressure equals pressure the pressure outside the of the body or atmospheric pressure. pressure. When discussing outside respiratory pressures, this is generally referred to as a relative pressure of zero. Pressures, this, is this is because what matters is the difference between the two pressures, not their absolute values. Thus a negative pressure is a pressure below atmospheric, while a positive pressure is above atmospheric. They are covered in a double layer membrane, which forms a thin space surrounding the lungs called the pleural cavity. Which forms a thin the pressure within the pleural lungs, cavity, the or intrapleural pressure, is normally negative. The cavity, this negative pressure acts like a suction to keep negative. the lungs inflated. This negative it, pressure such as like in the case of pneumothorax, inflated. when the chest wall is punctured this and the pleural cavity has the same pressure as the outside air, the lung would collapse. The pleural cavity has the same pressure as the outside Pulmonary air. ventilation is achieved by rhythmically collapse. changing the volume of the thoracic cavity. Pulmonary ventilation During inspiration, the diaphragm and the external the intracostal muscles contract. During expanding the thoracic cavity the and the lungs. And this increase in volume contract. results in a expanding decrease in pressure, causing outside air to flow. This increase in volume Another result to inflate the lungs is the warming of This effect is most notable in. on a cool day when the temperature out significantly lower. The, lungs the inhaled the air increases air. in volume this as it warms up inside the body and inflates the lungs, facilitating inhalation. Okay, so let's scan. In the chest cavity expands that will decrease the pressure so if we as the chest cavity expands you have an increase in the volume of the chest cavity so the chest cavity is expanded due to the rib cage is going up and the diaphragm contracting and going down that increases the volume of the chest cavity you increase the volume of chest cavity that decreases the pressure and with the decrease in pressure that now has given a pressure difference between inside the lungs and outside the lungs and so it's seen it's something called a negative chest pressure and because it is negative that will result in air rushing in through the nose into the, the lungs, okay? This is done with just regular breathing, but regular breathing will um, activate this, the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm. While inspiration requires muscular While contraction requires muscular and, hence expenditure, expenditure, and hence energy expenditure, expiration during quiet breathing is a during quiet breathing, a passive process, and the muscles relax, thoracic and lung volumes decrease and pressures increase, pushing ore on the elasticity of the lungs and ribcage, their ability to spring back to the original dimension. Pushing air out of the lungs. So to summarize in this situation, when the expiration occurs, it occurs because the muscles of the rib cage relax. And when the muscles of the rib cage relax, the rib cage drops. The diaphragm will relax and it will curve back up again. Because the rib cage and the diaphragm have now decreased, you have a decrease in your chest volume. And that decrease in chest volume will increase the pressure 
naturally and naturally air is pushed out of the lungs and this is done passively because it's just due to the recoil of the lungs and the decrease of the rib cage. So this can be affected if there is a um, problem with the, the rib cage or the decrease in the elasticity of the lungs. So passive breathing is, sorry, relaxed breathing is passive. Deep breathing Deep takes breathing more. requires more forceful contractions of the diaphragm, intercostal muscles, and involves additional muscles to produce larger changes in the thoracic volume. So in order to get those changes in thoracic volume, we have extra muscle. So here is your sternocleidomastoid. These are your scalene muscles, and you're using your rectus abdominis and your oblique muscles, and that will force air out because it pulls your rib cage uh, and moves your rib cage more aggressively. Deep expiration, unlike quiet expiration, is an active process. Another factor that affects ventilation is the resistance to airflow, which exists within the lung tissues and in the airways. Lung compliance refers to the ease with which the lungs expand. Healthy lungs normally have high compliance, low resistance, like a thin balloon, easy to inflate. Lung compliance is reduced when the lungs become stiff in conditions that cause scarring of tissues or fibrosis. So think of compliance as the ability to expand. In this case, the lung turns into a thick balloon, harder to inflate. Diseases that narrow the airways, such as asthma, increase resistance making it harder to breathe. The airways may also dilate or constrict in response to various factors. For example, parasympathetic stimulation and histamine typically narrow the bronchioles, increase resistance, and decrease airflow, while epinephrine, a hormone released during exercises, dilates bronchioles and thereby increases airflow. The thing about breathing is it actually takes muscle stimulation. So you're using skeletal muscles. And if you remember, skeletal muscles are voluntary. So you must send messages. Luckily, our brain sends them automatically and they send them based on stimulus from what's called the inspiration center. Now your inspiration center is in your medulla oblongata and your pond. So the medulla and your pawns and they will um, send impulses to the intercostal muscles and to the diaphragm and as the muscles contract it will cause inhalation. The nerve output will cease abruptly causing inspiration to relax, inspiratory muscles to relax and the elastic recoil of the thoracic cage causes exhalation. So your brain must tell your rib cage muscles or your, your intercostal muscles to contract. And you have two different um, centers there. Don't worry about them right now. Just realize you have them. Now those can actually be changed in the, or you can stimulate the sensors in your brain stem. And you can change those. Oh, we're running out of memory. So, oh, I got two minutes left. We can change those factors. Um, I'm going to run out of memory, so I need to clear it. And I'll continue on with the variations in that in the next part three.